Here's your news for May 10th, 2020. We are kicking off today with news from Money in the Bank, as two new matches have been added to tonight's show. On the kickoff show that begins at 6 p.m. Eastern, Jeff Hardy faces Cesaro, while fans who stick around for the pay-per-view will get to see R-Truth face MVP. These two matches are the latest additions to a stacked card, which will also see Braun Strowman defend his Universal title against The Fiend, WWE Champion Drew McIntyre face Seth Rollins, and two Money in the Bank ladder matches that will air simultaneously from WWE's headquarters in Stamford. One person who will have a close eye on tonight's pay-per-view is Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch, who has broken yet another record. This week, Lynch hit her 397th day with the title, meaning she has held the title longer than anybody else, surpassing the 396 combined days of Alexa Bliss's three reigns. Charlotte Flair, who was the first holder of the title, comes in third place with a combined 242 days, while Lynch's nemesis takes fourth, holding the Raw Women's Championship for 231 days before losing it to the man. With Lynch closing in on 400 days, it's clear the WWE has faith in the Irish-born superstar, but with Money in the Bank taking place tonight, Lynch may not be holding the gold for much longer. As noted earlier, a couple of released WWE stars have retained the services of Michael Dawkins to handle their trademark filings. Dawkins handles trademarks for several wrestlers in AEW, so while it's not a confirmation of anything, it seems to point to them headed to AEW after their non-compete clauses expire in mid-July. Another released WWE superstar who is using Dawkins as his attorney is Brian Myers, aka former WWE superstar Kurt Hawkins. Myers has filed for the following trademarks, Never Defeated and The Prince of Queens. These two filings appear to be for merchandising. He was using his real name on the independent scene before his last WWE run, so that may be the name he uses going forward. Again, although he is using Dawkins as his attorney, that does not necessarily mean that he is making the jump to AEW. However, others we've written about that have used Dawkins have ended up there or are expected to sign with AEW. Those names include Lance Archer, The Revolt, and Brody Lee. Matt Cardona, aka Zack Ryder, is also using Dawkins, so it looks like he may be AEW bound. This is not a surprise since he is friends with people in AEW, including Cody Rhodes. From AEW to NXT now, and though Keith Lee is already doing big things on the gold brand as the North American champion, the Limitless One knows he could be doing things elsewhere. While speaking on Lillian Garcia's Chasing Glory podcast, Lee weighed in on possibly moving to Raw or SmackDown. He said, I know that a lot of fans are interested in seeing Keith Lee mix it up with some of the guys on Raw and SmackDown, and I think that at the end of the day, I am a competitor, so I want to go where the competition is, and it doesn't matter which brand it is to me, if they can come to NXT, I'll stay at NXT, but if they want me on Raw or SmackDown, I will show up, and I will make a statement. There's no shortage of fans wanting to see what Lee could do outside of NXT, especially after his appearances at last year's Survivor Series and this year's Royal Rumble. But for now, the Limitless One is happy in NXT. Moving on to SmackDown now, as the SmackDown Mystery Hacker storyline captured the attention of the WWE Universe. Some fans have been intrigued by the glitches since they started popping up months ago. They would also appear during pay-per-view events, but only during blue brand segments. Now, the hacker could be close to revealing their identity. There could be more than one superstar behind the SmackDown mystery hacker. Some fans believe that Mustafa Ali and Shorty G both shared the audio on a recent video. This week's episode of SmackDown included another video. This time, the hacker played an audio recording of a female's voice. One fan slowed down the audio and found something very interesting. The female's voice is saying payback is coming and it's coming real soon. Fans seem to be debating on who is saying those words. When the audio is slowed down, it certainly sounds like a familiar voice. Mickey James, Ronda Rousey, and Maurice have all been tossed around for possible names belonging to this mystery female voice. We've got news from the million dollar man Ted DiBiase today, as the Hall of Famer's house is up for sale but had a very interesting time. Recently, DiBiase's charity and son Brett were named in the largest embezzlement investigation in the history of Mississippi Department of Human Services, which may explain why Ted's house is for sale. 
Sitting on 1.42 acres with a lakeside view, the French Colonial Retreat also has 55 bathrooms and 6,000 square foot residents, with DiBiase asking for $1.57 million. DiBiase always said that everybody has a price, and now so does his home, and it'll be interesting to see if anyone buys in the current situation. We're looking at Vice's Dark Side of the Ring next as the relationship of Jimmy Stuka and Nancy Argentino was recently covered. Now, new information has been revealed by Mel Magazine as a police report filed against Snuka in 1983 for assaulting his then-girlfriend claims that Vince McMahon tried to squelch Argentino's testimony. The police report reads, Vince McMahon tried to talk her out of making the complaint against Snuka. Four months after Snuka's third arrest for assault, Argentino died of a skull fracture after allegedly being hit with a stationary object. And it wouldn't be until 2015 that the Superfly was arrested, but was deemed mentally unfit to stand trial. With that said, Sergeant Peter Bronstad, who worked on the case, says he doesn't remember McMahon being involved, but recalls a, quote, shorter, older man wearing a hat who claimed to be Snuka's manager. Two officers who were on the scene are mentioned in the report, saying that they witnessed Snuka attack Argentino, and one officer in training at the time heard Argentino pleading for her alleged attacker to stop. This is a very dark story from wrestling that fans probably will never get the whole truth to, but given that Snuka was a huge star in McMahon's company at the time, it's clear Vince didn't want this story getting out. More Hall of Famer news next as Jesse Ventura has confirmed that he isn't running for U.S. President. As a former governor of Minnesota, Ventura recently flirted with the idea of running as part of the Green Party, but took to Twitter to say he won't be running after all. Though he won't be running, the WWE legend did confirm that he will still be voting Green, and encouraged anyone tired with the two main parties to do the same. Back in the ring now, and this Sunday, the Forgotten Sons will have a chance to capture the SmackDown tag titles just weeks after their main roster debut. Given how quickly the trio have been pushed, there have been rumors that they were called up to replace the Usos, as Jimmy is dealing with an injury, though that apparently isn't the case. On Dropkick Discussions, though, Tom Colohue said they were brought up to replace a team, but not the Usos. He said, the Forgotten Sons were planned to be brought up for several months, kind of to get them out of NXT, where there is really nothing for them, and in addition to sort of replace the Revival, who have now moved on. It'll be interesting to see whether the trio of Blake, Riker, and Cutler capture the tag titles at Money in the Bank, though they'll have some stiff competition from the reigning champs The New Day, The Miz and Morrison, and The Lucha House Party. Speaking of titles from the blue brand, we've got news from Sami Zayn, as the reigning Intercontinental Champion hasn't been on TV for quite some time. Though one week was missed due to oral surgery, Zayn has missed several weeks due to being uncomfortable competing in the ongoing global situation. And according to a source for Ringside News, fans shouldn't expect to see Zayn anytime soon. The fact that he remains the Intercontinental Champion could cause a major issue, and Ringside News is also reporting that Zayn's future with the title is going to be addressed. Of course, the ultimate decision lies with Vince McMahon, but one thing we know, and while fans can still see Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura represent the Artists Collective on SmackDown, it's clear fans won't see the Intercontinental Champion for quite some time. Back to Money in the Bank now, and with this year's two titular ladder matches taking place at WWE headquarters in Stamford, the company has gotten pretty creative with their merchandise. It seems someone in WWE is a huge fan of The Office, as one shirt features the classic stick figure man on a placard, much like the images used in the much-missed NBC series, and while another shirt features a World's Most Moneyest in the Bank mug, a play on Scott's World's Best Boss mug. These weren't the only shirt options, as fans can also pick up an I Wish I Was There shirt, similar to WrestleMania's I Wasn't There shirt, as it's clear WWE's marketing team are trying to make the best out of the current situation. One man fans won't be seeing at Money in the Bank is Vampiro, though the former WCW star is on the company's alumni page, a fact he recently brought to the fans' attention. On Facebook, Vampiro sent out a message that he'd appreciate any help getting WWE's attention, as he said, Are any of you wrestling fans? I can still go, and I'm wondering, can you help me make some noise and get WWE's attention? I'm all over the network, all over the video games, and now I'm an alumni. 
I would go there in a heartbeat, but they gotta at least know I'm interested. Help me make some noise. The reason he's on the alumni page is because WWE bought WCW, and given that the company recently released around 40% of his workforce, it's unlikely they're looking to pick up the 52-year-old wrestler slash commentator. We've got some news from AEW now as this week's Dynamite was live, and we know that for a very particular reason. As the show faded to black and the inner circle celebrated, a voice could be heard saying, you f***ing nailed it, multiple times. Though it sounded like Sammy Guevara, the screen was too dark for us to be sure, though fans, including Matthew of Botchamania fame, were thrilled to tweet out this error. Hopefully this will be a warning that the company should be more sure that the show is actually over before engaging in locker room talk, but at least we know that someone in AEW was really pleased with how Dynamite went. And finally today we're looking at the new Undertaker docuseries, and though we all know that Brock Lesnar broke the streak, it could have been Edge. In an interview, Michelle McCool said that Edge was given the chance to break the streak in 2008, but declined, saying that it made zero sense for him to make it 15-1. Of course, the pair would go on to compete at that year's SummerSlam, where the Phenom would destroy Edge in Hell in a Cell, while Brock Lesnar would have no issue with breaking the streak himself six years later.